Legacy Effects creates practical effects for hundreds of movies and commercials annually, from creature design to prosthetic makeup to animatronics to specialty suits. Our approach incorporates the latest in 3D printing technology with a deep pool of artistic talent. The founding partners at Legacy Effects supervised projects at Stan Winston Studios for 25 years. It was there nearly a decade ago that 3D printing really started to emerge in the special effects workflow. Back at Stan Winston's studio, the design department was basically working on more visual effects rather than practical effects. So we started playing with different technologies to work hand in hand more with the traditional physical effects that Stan Winston was producing. Fabrication department, the mechanical department, the electronics department, mold making department, and the model shop. We needed to bring design in to contribute. Around 2006, Alan Scott was approached to do all the miniatures for this Halo Diorama campaign. Halo Diorama was extremely ambitious. We ended up creating 700 figurines, about seven inches tall, that depicted a massive battle. A huge motion control camera went over a stage that was 70 feet long by 30 feet wide. You had vignettes and scenarios, explosions, shots of agony and people getting killed, hundreds of different poses. That meant that we had to create things really, really quickly. We utilized the artists that were still in that design room, taking the game assets and converting them into stereolithography files that we could send to a service bureau to actually produce physical parts. Using 3D modeling, we would grow some just to be molded. We would break them apart with arms and legs and heads, put it on a body and get a variety of different poses out of that one part. There were some that were so specific, we scanned a whole battery of actors in different expressions, and then grew their faces, and then we would populate them on different figurines. It was a perfect testing platform because in the delivery and the amount of characters that needed to be done, traditional sculpting, would, it would never have worked just within the deadline. This tool allowed us to do that job. When we got into projects like Iron Man, we did a variety of maquettes through 3D printing, uh, added manufacturing in acrylics or you know whichever materials that uh, were being offered up at the time. That was so successful, just growing those maquettes, that I ran some numbers and tried to figure out, well, maybe we could utilize this process in growing a full Iron Man. The numbers worked out, and uh, that was kind of the first one we, we kicked off as a full-size piece that we did completely rapid prototype. At that time, we were the first people to do that type of uh, work. It worked out great. Um, we were all really excited about it. Stan was very excited about uh, seeing this process taking the next step. After the untimely passing of Stan Winston in 2008, we formed Legacy Effects, and we were still in the middle of Avatar, and we had been beta testing new sculpting programs and starting to think, boy, it sure would be great if we had this printer in-house. We brought in an object, Eden 260V, which we still use to this day, almost 24-7. In the morning, I could print you a rigid part. After lunch, I could maybe switch and print you a small clear part, and then back by five o'clock, I could print you a rubber part all by pushing a button and changing out materials. That's killer for this studio. You want fluidity, yeah, and that's what this whole business is based on. In a feature film now, you'll have four months if you're lucky. We do a tremendous amount of commercial work here, and you have, it could be days, it could be three weeks. Six weeks is luxurious. That time frame is so shortened that you need to move from the design into actual pieces really quickly. When you do a design for a character, it ultimately has to be brought into the real world. If you've already had the illustration approved, traditionally you would then have to do either a maquette or a study, and then you'd have that approved before you move into the full-size piece. A lot of stuff used to be modeled in clay. The iterations would take several days. Now we can basically submit something, have a change by the end of the day. Concept design is no longer just pencil rendering. Concept design is a 3D model. The production, the directors, everyone's seen it in a turntable, so they know exactly what it looks like. They've approved it. All we have today is like, how big do you want it? It's all the same at that point. 
we complete a whole movie now with multiple, say, Iron Man suits or RoboCop suits or 26 robots in real steel in the same amount of time that we spent hand sculpting the first Terminator. If you have the time, sure, sculpt, you know, in clay. If you don't have the time, digital sculpting is really the only method that you have to be able to get something of any quality and detail out. When you sculpt something where you have hard edge designs that need to be perfect, really lends itself well to sculpting digitally, then, then rapid prototyping that out. What this process of the rapid prototyping with digital design has allowed us to do is the engineering, the joints and mechanisms, that's put in simultaneously with the design. It's efficient because you can pre-check and see, well, is that joint going to crash when that forearm moves? 3D printing offers something that traditional approaches didn't have a solution for. Our lead sculptors embrace that kind of technology and they use their artistic skills with a different tool set. Once you take a practical approach to your digital sculpture, you start to find there are more similarities than not. Today, there really isn't any difference other than the tactile part of it. Basically, you get the raw sculpture handed to you. It still requires the same finesse and the same artistic skills with model makers and artists to take it to a finished level. In the business that we're in, we're always going to need duplicates. We're going to need a soft version. We're going to need a stunt version. So if we're going to do 150 suits of armor, we're going to print one. We're going to make it really nice, do all our artwork to it, and then we're going to mold it. And then you can control the material that we're running it in and how many that we need. We're at the starting point for this asset that's going to be final for physical and the visual effects portions of the film. When you're working digitally, you really don't have a sense of true perspective. One of the things that we like to do a lot is we'll make maquettes of the suit or a character that we're making and they use that as on-set reference for lighting and texturing and whatnot. That reference is propagated to visual effects to overall make a much better product in the end. Our whole industry from when it began with Dick Smith back in his lab is an industry founded on stealing and borrowing other techniques and other processes from other industries and applying them to this industry. When we needed to make fake teeth for Interview of the Vampire, we went to dentists, like what materials do you use? In fake eyes, we went to oculars. What kind of resin? What do you use? We looked at prosthesis. And the same thing with fake skins. We went to the medical industry. We grow together when we share information. We work with people that work in aerospace, that work in sports, that work in medical. We even have access to people that are R&Ding different materials and where material research is going. We have to come up with solutions in days, and most industry moves slower. There are a lot of things that we do here at Legacy that's a tremendous amount of knowledge to someone that's on the outside. It's kind of like open source. Everyone gets to learn from everyone else's successes and failures. It's fantastic, I think. It's just like, what could the ceiling be on this? We haven't seen it yet.